Hello everyone. Today we'll look at the elimination method of solving simultaneous equations, which is easier to work with in certain systems of simultaneous equations. In this lesson, Amashni will revise the substitution method and will show you how the elimination method works. What is a set of simultaneous equations to solve? Do you still remember how we solved this kind of question? Both equations are already simplified, so we can now choose one of them to use by getting either the x or y by itself. In the first equation, the coefficient of y is 1, so we'll choose equation 1 to start off with. Now y is equal to 9 minus 2x. If I put this value of y into the second equation, I'll be left with only x's. So 3x minus all of 9 minus 2x is equal to 16. The whole bracket must be subtracted, so I must be careful with the signs. 3x minus 9 plus 2x is equal to 16. So 5 times x is 25. So x is 5. Now what do you do next? We substitute this result into any of the equations. Now which one would you use? I'm going to use this one here, where y is written on its own already. Now y is equal to 9 minus 2 times 5, which is 9 minus 10. So y is equal to negative 1. We have found our solution. It is the ordered pair 5 minus 1. Now remember that you should check to see if x equal to 5 and y equal to negative 1 does in fact satisfy both the original equations. Now that was easy enough. But look again, if the question had something like this for y, it would become really tricky to solve. If we substitute equation 1 into equation 2, we get 3x minus 4x minus 25 all divided by 3 is equal to 16. Now even this equation is not really difficult, but it does show that the method we're using can sometimes become a problem. Wouldn't you prefer to avoid fractions like this? I would. That's why I want to show you another method to solve this particular example. The elimination method. Do you know what eliminate means? In dramas, you often hear that a criminal wants to eliminate his opposition. It means that he wants to get rid of his opponents. So, using this method, we simply try to get rid of one of the variables to make things simpler. Actually, this method is not really that different from the method you have been using to solve simple equations. If we had an equation x plus 2 is equal to 9, to solve this equation, we would have to add negative 2 to both sides. So, x I can write that step a little differently like this. Minus 2 is equal to minus 2. Do you see that I've made two equations? And if I add them together, I get x is equal to 7. Am I allowed to add two equations like this? Sure. Remember that the two sides of the equal sign are still balanced. Now let's do the same example as we started, but we'll solve it using this method here by adding the columns. Both equations are already simplified. Also, look at how the variables are lined up under each other. So the terms containing x's are in the first column and the term containing y's are in the second column. We are going to add the columns down this way and we want to end up with an equation that has only one unknown in it. So we need to decide which unknown or variable to get rid of or eliminate. Now let me explain this. If I add this column down this way, let me just put a line across here. 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. Positive y plus negative y gives me 0. Then I can write is equal to 9 plus 16 gives me 25. We now have the equation 5x is equal to 25. We can solve for x. 
x is equal to 5. Using the substitution method, we found exactly the same answer for x. It just took a bit longer to get there. So what's next? Well, we need to find the value of the other unknown, y. So we need to substitute this value, x equals 5, into one of the two equations. I will use equation 1. So we get 2 multiplied by 5 plus y is equal to 9. We get 10 plus y is equal to 9. And simplifying this, y is equal to 9 minus 10, which is minus 1. That's it. We have the solution. It is the ordered pair 5 and minus 1. Now that was a pretty simple example. To be sure that this method works, we need to test it on another one. Solve for x and y. Are the equations simplified? Yes. Great, the x's and y's are lined up too. We can add these two equations together, but it won't help us to eliminate x or y. This is a true equation, but we're no closer to finding values for x and y. Now look at the coefficients of y in the two equations. Here, the coefficient is negative 1, and here it is positive 4. Now it would be great if this y could have a coefficient of positive 4 because then we could just add the two equations and the unknown would be eliminated. We can multiply every term in the equation by 4. Remember that it is perfectly fine to do so as long as we multiply every term on both sides of the equation. Multiplying out gets us 8x minus 4y is equal to 36. We'll call this equation 3. Very clear labels for your equations are important tools when you're working with simultaneous equations. So now we can use equation 3 and equation 2 to solve our simultaneous equations. To eliminate the y's, we add like terms in the two equations. We get x is equal to 2. Now have we finished? No, we must still solve for y, the other variable. To do this, we substitute x equals 2 into either one of the equations. I think we should use equation 1, since it is the simple of the two. So our solution is the ordered pair x, y equal to 2 minus 5. As always, you should check that the solution pair you found is really correct. When you substitute it back into the original equations, it should make both equations true. Here is the last example for today. Solve for x and y. Now, we have covered three methods to solve this. Graphing, substitution or elimination. Let's say you decided to use the method of substitution. If you wanted to get x on its own in equation 1, you would get x is equal to 2y minus 10 all divided by 3. It looks too complicated. Let's see if y on its own is any better. You would get y equals to 10 plus 3x all divided by 2. Of course, you can substitute this in, but gosh, it seems like a lot of work. Now, wouldn't you prefer to work with a simpler equation without any fractions? Let's use another algebraic method. Let's see what happens if we try to eliminate an unknown. Look at the unknowns carefully and decide which one you would like to eliminate. Which variable seems easier to work with? The x's have coefficients of negative 3 and 5. This doesn't seem very helpful. But look at the y's. Do you see that I can multiply this 2y here by 2 and then I would get 4y in both these equations? But now, think carefully. What will I end up with if we add the 4y's? I will have 8y's, which means that the unknown is not eliminated. Have you figured out what I can do to eliminate the y terms? Have a look. If I subtract one equation from the other, then I will have 4y minus 4y, and that leaves me with no y's. 
that's what I want. So I multiply each term in the equation by 2. This gives me 2 multiplied by minus 3x plus 2y is equal to 2 multiplied by 10. This simplifies to minus 6x plus 4y is equal to 20. Let's call this equation number 3. Now I need to subtract. I can subtract equation 3 from equation 2 or the other way around. Either way, the y's will be eliminated. I'm going to work with equation 2 minus equation 3. I get 5x minus minus 6x which gives me 11x. 4y minus 4y cancels the y's out. 42 minus 20 gives me 22. x is equal to 2. So what's next? We need to solve for y. I could substitute x into any equation, but I will use equation 1. Our simultaneous solution is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 8. So as you saw, sometimes it is easier to use the elimination method to get rid of one of the variables. We will look at more examples using the elimination method in the next lesson. That's it for now, grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the equations and inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.